My name is Kevin Harlan, but I do research um, for the Center for Bioinspired Nanomaterials um, with Trevor Douglas. Um, so one of the big things we talk about there are protein cages um, and their applications. So that's kind of what my uh, little module is about here. I'm going to talk about um, using protein cages as reaction vessels, drug delivery systems, and um, a new thing we're talking about is MRI contrast agents. Um, so first of all, when you think about a protein cage, um, if you don't study proteins, it's sort of a concept that's a little bit abstract. So um, to kind of give a better idea of it, think of the, uh, the protein cages I talk about as really tiny soccer balls. So a soccer ball has three unique surfaces. It's got the exterior surface, right, that you can kick and throw and feel. It's got the interior surface, which is normally hollow and filled with air. Um, and it's got the spaces between the little patches, um, interfaces, we'll call them, um, that can be worked with too. So when we're working with these protein cages, we utilize all three surfaces. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are reaction vessels. So you kind of get a nice image here. Um, this is a protein cage. So basically, it's the shell of the soccer ball. Um, and inside, you can kind of see this hollow nature. Um, and so we take advantage of the hollowness inside this protein shell and can use it as a reaction vessel. Um, so basically, one of your big problems when you're doing chemical reactions is that you can get contaminants, you can get side reactions um, from the air or other surrounding environments. When you put it inside this protein cage, you essentially trap it and sequester it um, inside this soccer ball um, that really increases your productivity, cuts down on side reactions, um, and allows you to actually have a contained reaction. Um, so one of the big things um, now, uh, the things that I've been working on, um, is hydrogen production. So everybody knows about the fuel shortage that's coming up, and we're having issues like that. Hydrogen fuel is going to be um, a big thing coming up and um, one of the things we're working on is using these proteins as reaction vessels um, to efficiently produce hydrogen gas um, that can be used for hydrogen fuel cells and things like that. Um, so the technique that we have developed earlier um, is there's some chemistry going on out here. Basically all this exterior chemistry out here is just stimulating electrons. Um, and so if we can move electrons in and out of this soccer ball, of this protein cage, um, they can react with hydrogen atoms um, and go through a process that produces hydrogen. Um, and we do this using um, a platinum catalyst. So basically, all this platinum catalyst is doing is um, increasing the rate at which we can produce this hydrogen. Um, but Without the protein cage, the platinum catalyst would be extremely inefficient um, because by using the protein cage, we can sequester these platinum catalysts um, in high concentrations inside the protein cage. Um, and so one of the things that uh, my research specifically is focused on is getting rid of all this excess um, and on occasionally harmful and carcinogenic molecules um, and making a protein cage that you can actually photoactivate. So you shine light on it, um, you'll get this electron transfer, and you can produce hydrogen um, simply by stimulating the protein with light. Um, so another big thing that we work with are nanoparticles. Um, so nano has kind of been a buzzword um, the past few years, and it's an exciting and emerging technology. Um, and so, and I work in the Center for Bioinspired Nanomaterials, so obviously we should be doing something with these nanoparticles. Um, so, but it follows the same basic principle that we're trapping things again. We're sequestering things um, inside these protein cages. Um, and so, one of the things that nanoparticles that, um, that they're being used for, and I'll talk about in my last little section here, is MRI contrast agents. Um, but you can use nanoparticles um, for other things such as drug delivery or um, radiologically tracking drugs and things like that. Um, but the basic idea um, is that you have, and it'll pop up here in a minute, you have a protein cage that's empty, 
Um, and then you can actually mineralize, in this case it's an iron oxide, inside the protein cage. Um, so there's nothing special about it, there's just a set of conditions where you can actually get mineralization to occur um, inside this protein cage. Um, and then you can use the architecture of the protein to direct it um, different areas. So again, when I talked about previously that we utilize all aspects of the protein cage or the soccer ball, so in this case we're utilizing the interior, we're putting things on the inside. 